Hi, I'm Beko Pin, and you are watching Rappler. In 2013, On the Job, a neo-noir action thriller that explored the black, white, and gray areas of Philippine politics and law enforcement hit Philippine cinemas. Refresher in case uh, seven years was a long, long time away from for you, no? It was a breath of fresh air in Philippine cinema then, a movie that, according to a 2013 Rappler article, quote, helped revive the long dormant action genre in the country. A lot of things have happened since OTJ debuted at Cannes to a standing ovation and hit Philippine cinema. So seven years later, OTJ The Missing Eight, the long-awaited follow-up to the 2013 movie, is set to debut at the Venice Film Festival and it's going to stream Asia-wide via HBO Go. Our guest today is no less than the director of OTJ, both the first one and the missing eight, director Eric Mati, who's dialing in from Venice. Hello, sir. Kamusta? Hello. Hi, everyone. I hope all of you are safe. <laughs> yes, sir. Medyo, medyo minsan yung real life mas, ano pa nga, mas dramatic sa mga kwento sa pelikula. Ano. Pero, sir, ayun. Um, let's talk briefly about the history of The Missing Eight. Uh, it's about to premiere in a few days at, at Venice, where you are, um, and then uh, a few days after that, HBO Go. So, um, Kellen, like, when did you conceptualize uh, The Missing Eight? Well, we started uh, the writing process for uh, The Missing Eight. Uh, Michiko started writing it. Michiko Yamamoto, the writer, uh, started writing it around 2017. Hmm. And uh, mahaba haba yun. Uh, because <laughs> initially, we thought of three topics to tackle with uh, the second installment. Uh, unbeknownst to many, uh, they only remember on the job being uh, hinged on the idea of prisoners being brought out of prison to kill. But yes. the whole idea of on the job is really about picking certain sectors in government and in uh, particular in, in our country and uh, uh, finding out the moral dilemma uh, that, that is required to do the jobs properly. So in the second installment, we thought of three topics. There's uh, medical. Uh, we were supposed to uh, look into the black market release of medicines from China being brought in the Philippines by certain uh, government deals, uh, using a private company and then releasing it uh, uh, to earn from uh, the government funds. And then there's also gambling, where it relates to everyone in government. It connects uh, the gam gambling lords uh, no matter how many changes in in uh, the mayoral seat or in the governor's seat, uh, all of them are sort of uh, connected to uh, the gambling operation going on, not just in the countryside, but also in the major cities. And the third one was journalism. So when we pick journalism, it it was a difficult decision to make because coming from an action mm -hmm. thriller, we knew that dealing with journalism will not lend itself all the action-packed um, images that everyone is expecting in the second installment. No? Uh, and the research took a while. Uh, Michiko yeah. had to dig, dig up a lot of stories. And in the initial drafts of uh, on the job, the missing eight, we involved mm -hmm. uh, TV networks in the story that eventually, because the script turned out to be so uh, convoluted, we had to take out one segment, which is the TV networks, because we wanted to connect mm -hmm. the TV network, which presents, represent the, the more national uh, yes. part of the story. And then we're moving into the character of Sisoy, where he is in the countryside, mas provincia, and yes. yun. Gusto namin i-marry yung both, no? In journalism. Pero sobrang kapal na niya. 
<clears throat> that we decided take out the TV network and just deal with the uh, local uh, journalism. You know? mm -mm. Uh, See, good sir. Uh, yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Derek. No, and and the reason for that is uh, as opposed to uh, the the national journalists, medyo clear cut yung uh, issues surrounding them as opposed to a small town journalist where uh, yung moral compass medyo blurred um, sa, sa kanila no? because uh, they live in a small town, they don't get paid much um, mm -hmm. and usually they become mouthpieces for whoever is in power uh, to earn a little more. Uh, they usually double on two jobs, one as a writer mm -hmm. for a newspaper one as a radio commentator. So medyo interesting mm -hmm. siya na story for a journalist, no? As opposed to yung the likes ninyo na medyo mas klaro na o oh, yan lang talaga yung trabaho nyo. Diba? Mm -mm. Ito... Tsaka may, may, may struggle, sir, yung community journalists that, that we are fortunate enough not to have to undergo, di ba? May uh -oh. yung, nabanggit mo nga, yung economic struggles ba lang, parang uh, hindi naman sa we are rolling in cash, pero iba rin yung dynamics na, yung uh, oh -oh. function of a small uh, town. You can make a living as a national journalist compared to the ones in a smaller town. And with that comes along, yung are, are, you, stand, are you gonna stand by with the credo and the ethics of the of being a journalist and go hungry or not feed your children or will you slowly uh let go of some of your integrity bit by bit mm -hmm. so that you earn a little more diba? and later on yeah. you get blinded you haven't you you don't realize that you've already given up everything you know as a journalist yeah yeah Nabanggit niyo nga po yung it took a long time to research um, for the movie, for, for Michiko who, who wrote it. But like, pa paano yun? Ano yung process nun? And how long exactly did it take to do? Kasi parang nung napanood ko nga siya, dun, dun nga ata ako, um, I was struck by how the the some of the details in the movie are are things that mm -hmm. I discuss with colleagues in, in journalism, right? So how long did it yeah. take to research that? Well, um, the research are divided. The, the research that went into it, uh, you can divide it into maybe three segments. One is uh, personal interviews. Mm -mm. We. We did a lot of interview with Ed Lingao. Um, we we interviewed uh, Sinashara, Zembrano, mm. um, and and other journalists uh, just just to find out how it works. Uh, even some of the terms that you use. Uh, we've even had uh, uh, who's the photographer? Who's the who's the controversial photographer? Uh, yung ano ba to sir yung yung who, inquirer who, na na uh, took all the photos of me of the of the tokang generation uh, oh, is, I, is it Rafi anyway yeah si Rafi Rafi Lerma yes. si Rafi Lerma we yes. also found Rafi Lerma on uh, when when we had the draft of the script he looked at it and uh, wanted to see if it reads right uh, of course, explaining to him because he found it weird that there are some expository uh, mm. <laughs> sentences and dialogues. And we said, that's necessary. It's, it's a movie. You know? mm. uh, so that's, that's the first segment. The second segment is really just uh, research on, on the net. Mm. And the third one, we hired uh, Julie Nalyaga, uh, who's with the probe team uh, mm. as a researcher to look into cer certain topics that we couldn't find on the net. You know? mm. um, and putting all of that together, uh, we we came up with on the job. But, but you must remember that uh, when we do these films about certain sectors, we 
you're not out there to to do an advocacy film for yeah for such a sector. I mean, we really wanna mine it, and uh, the 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 more the more strange or weirder the moral compass becomes, for us, it's it's better as a film because you get to discuss what's not being discussed out there. No? So, right, right. parang ganda. Which, which is also essentially like what OTJ did the first movie, right? Like it's not NBI or PNP as hero, but as these yeah. frail human beings like struggling to, I guess, do what they think is right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And and if you notice the, the way the characters are written, it really uh, pictures how it is in the Philippines where it's a really small country Everyone knows each other, so all. Uh, I, I I think uh, corruption. The the reason why corruption thrives in the Philippines is because everybody knows everybody, and you can just ask help from this guy, this guy, and this guy, and this guy, and they all mix and match. Imagine uh, Piolo's character in uh, the first on the job uh, is married to the daughter of a senator. Uh, right. of a senator, di ba? Mm-mm. So, alam mo na kaagad yung conflict of interest. No? And since they mainly work around uh, NCR, uh, ang bilis na din nila magkita-kita, magkakilala, maghingi ng tulong, di ba? Uh, which, yeah. it's not just for them, but also for all of us. Ganon din naman tayo, di ba? We all have connections here and there. We know the congressman of this. We know a mayor in this. Yeah. I think you're interesting as well as the OTJ because I, I think that was the first time that I explicitly saw that portrayed in Philippine cinema. Yung circle ng academy graduates from the military yes. academies. That was also, yeah. like, that's another layer that you don't always see discussed in 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 fiction in Philippine cinema that in that manner no na parang ganun ka uh, ganun ka explicit to as a subtle, um, right the, 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 yeah uh, that's major in the earlier research we did for on the job one because i really wanted at that time uh, i was still the one writing it before i passed it on to Michiko. Uh, there's a big scandal with the military uh, the PMA generals mm about the lost money in, this was GMA's time, I think. Yes. It was the uh, helicopters. The if... Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, yes. there was a fall guy, uh, which was the basis of the father of uh, Francis Coronel. Mm. Um, one who committed suicide, the general. Yes. Uh, yeah, he, he's, the, he's the basis for, the, for Piolo Pascual's uh, father. Um, and that's when the military story came in, uh, right. in, in the whole movie. And and it's pretty obvious, um, all our coup d'etats uh, are, were like Thailand, Thailand where uh, the coup d'etats uh, maintain the status quo ng, ng government. No? Pag hindi happy si, si soldiers, with the governance, they do a, they stage a coup. The the yeah. line resonated talaga in the line ni Leo Martinez is you you think uh, the government officials are running this country? No, it's yeah. us, the military, the yeah. police. We are running this country. Kasi ganun talaga. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. When I, when I rewatched yeah, the first movie, parang and it it's ang ganda ng timing because September we 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 commemorate uh, martial law in the Philippines, right? The, the declaration yes. of martial law. But sir, since you already discussed in the first film, no, ah, uh, kasi na nasubay bayan ko nga sa in, via your social media post, di ba? Parang the the process of remastering the first movie. What was it like revisiting the plot, revisiting the characters, um, some of whom no longer appear in the second movie because well. Hindi naman siya to spoiler kasi seven years na. Kasi patay na sila Uh-oh. by the end of the first movie. So what was it like revisiting that? No. I, alam mo, kwan talaga siya, cinema moment for me. While I was, while we were rummaging through the scenes that uh, were taking, taken out in the first uh, installment. Kasi 
in the first installment, di ba, you know it's gonna be shown in, in the cinema. You have two hours. There's a kind of uh, parang accepted na pace Mm. na hindi lalay la yung movie because in the two mm. hours you need to get it over with no the entire story so so the first cut was around three hours and I took out a lot of scenes to make the cinema experience a little better now that it's a series uh, I think because it's episodic no matter yes. how many parts you introduce people at the back of their mind are saying, okay, uh, after one hour, it's done. I'll, I'll look into the second episode. So parang tanggap nila if there's uh, a lot of convoluted plots. And mm. when we wrap through the scenes that were taken out, this is what's weird. I first watched uh, the original on the job. And then when I found the other stories, um, I opened up uh, a few more scenes for... Uh, the Piolo Pascual character for Gerald and then for Joey Marquez. Nung dumating na yun, parang, ay may iba pa pala silang buhay that <laughs> I didn't see it in, di ba? Yung parang, and, and I shot it. Ako naman nag-shoot. Yeah. Pero parang, may na-realize ka lang na, uy, may, may, ay, ito pa pala nag-usap pa pala sila, oh. aside from yung scene na nag-away sila. Ay, ala, ang lungkot. Alam mo yun? Yung parang, lumaki yung buhay nila, kumapal yung kwento nila, and they're trapped in time, di ba? Parang nasa time capsule, kasi they look the same as yeah. what you saw and how you saw them in in the original, di ba? Right. Even tumanda na sila yun in real life, di ba? So, may, may wala siya strange lang siya na magic na binibigay. Right. Pa- parang ano nga, sir, eh, nung pinanood ko nga yung version for the series, on, uh, for the HBO Asia original, parang mas naintindihan ko lalo yung lalim ng relationship uh, ng characters ni Gerald tsaka ni, ni Joey. Kasi parang in the movie, you understand din naman the emotional connection. But Pero parang mas, yeah. mas, ra- mas nagigets mo yung eventual na sorrow of one of the characters um yeah. when, when yeah. well, pwede naman sabihin to, you know, you, you, under, you, you, you have a better appreciation. Sorry, not Gerald. Uh-oh. I meant Piolo. Uh, you get a better appreciation Uh-oh. for paano napunta doon at bakit ganun yung reaction uh, ng Oo. isang karakter. Oo. Nakita natin yung hesitation niya. I mean, he, he loves he loves the 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 brightness ng ambition, di ba? Pero mm-hmm. he has duty. May duty siya to uphold. Parang na na explain pa a little more and in connection to the yes. dead father parang kumapal yes. palalo di ba? Yes. that he really went yes. out and uh, vindicated himself from his father who he yes. judged yes. his evil di ba, general di ba? Ang, yes. ang ganda lang eh. now I remember the reason why a lot of the scenes si Gerald, kay Piolo kay Joey were taken out is because just with jo- Joel Torres' story alone as a film Parang yun ay thread mo. Mm, tama. Correct. Oo. Correct. But putting all of them on equal footing in a film makes it very right. confusing, di ba? Right. Parang daming kwento. Yun. But now, it's right. a series. <coughs> Excuse me. Pwede mo talaga ikwento lahat, di ba? And right. then, people would enjoy uh, getting to know them a little better. Right, right. Thank you for pointing that out. Kasi nung pinanood ko siya, kasi it's been years since I watched the first movie. Oo nga, kaya pala parang mas ano, mas buo at mas nagigets ko na yung pinanggagalingan ng ibang characters na bukod kay bukod kay Joel Torre na ano. As in, mas, oo nga. Oo, oh, like, like so, hindi <laughs> naman yung spoiler ko. In the final scene <laughs> of, of Joel and Gerald, and mm-hmm. Gerald said, ang gusto ko sana ang dalhin dito si Diane. Uh, kausapin ko si Warden, dito na siya titira. But because you saw additional scenes prior to that of right. Diane and him, right. parang ngayon, right. iba na yung tingin mo sa kanya eh, di ba? Na parang, right, right. Ah, he really wants this girl, di ba? He, di ba? Dati parang parang right. siya, by the way, ah, by the way, I yeah. have this idea, patirahin dito si Diane. Ngayon, looking at, seeing all the additional scenes between him and Diane, Iba na yung dating, di ba? Na right. He wants to make plans for his life in the future, di ba? 
Yeah, that he was actually pala foreseeing a future, uh, planning a future. Oh, oh. I'm wondering, so, na, na, napanood na ba ng original cast yung um, edit for the series? Wala pa, no? Wala. Wala pa. Oh, that's interesting. How do you react to, oh, you know, like... Sila, Magugulat sila. Yeah. yeah. So, so, sir, talking then about the, the, because we talked about the editing process or, or revisiting uh, the first OTJ movie, di ba? So, for OTJ, The Missing Eight, like, uh, m- most of editing, was it done under quarantine na? Or did you have a, did you start na rin editing ah, this? Uh, interesting yung kwa na yan. The, the cut that you saw, mm-hmm. um, di ba, nanood tayo sa, sa editing. Yes, sir. Uh, sa mothership. Yes, sir. Uh, prior to that, yung hindi hindi ko alam sa haba sa kapal ng kwento na we hit a wall kami ng editor ko because uh, it doesn't it, it doesn't flow right, no. Uh, in the cut that you saw, it was during the pandemic that whole break sa pandemic the lockdown that. Pagbalik namin to edit, parang automatic, we knew what to do with the edit. Parang it gave us that break, yung pandemic na yan, gave us that break to to look at it with fresh eyes. Wala naman akong inanalyze during the lockdown. But when we sat down to edit it, parang alam na namin, okay, we should just, what we did, what, what we did that we didn't do in the prior edits, before we'd intercut scenes ni si Soy and ni Roman constantly. This time around, we decided, no, let's focus on a chunk of scenes with si Soy Yes. before we got to the next chunk of Roman so that we could invest in, in the development of their character and in their plot lines. And that really worked. Yeah. No? Nung malaking chunks na yun nangyari, di ba? Yun. Pero direct when you were editing it during quarantine, alam niyo na ba, parang was it being edited in the context of alam niyo magiging HBO original series siya or was it edited as a parang movie pa rin talaga yung yung goal and goal for uh, the editing. This is the story of that. So uh I regretted that in the film version of the first one, I had to cut mm-hmm. out scenes to accommodate a, a better feel uh, during yes. a cinema experience mo, di ba? So in the second one, I was editing it and as long as it doesn't bother the storytelling, uh, I want to include the entire script. And yes. uh, the three, I ended up with a three hour, 28 minute cut. Oh, na, we, we, na, oh, na, na, <laughs> No, no windang oh, kami nung that, pinanood namin yung rough edit na, kasi we didn't realize it was that it would be that long. Umo kami not knowing na ganun pala kahaba yung screening. Di ba? And uh, before I could present and happy na ako na yes, I I think this story can work even with that length. And then before I presented it to the producers, I wanted if they hear it's three hours and 28 minutes and there's no cinemas because it's pandemic, anong gagawin nila sa three hours and 28 minutes, di ba? Uh, Siyempre magagalit yun. So we devised a plan to make a presentation where, one, we could show a standalone three hour, 28 minute film, either in festivals or in cinemas, kung gusto natin. Pero of course, hindi yan kikita kasi yung haba, di ba? Next, uh, we proposed cutting the three hour 28 film into two films. Mm-hmm. If ever the cinema would open, maybe it's a better deal for the audience to know that they can take a rest, watch one hour 40, and then maybe watch it the week after your second franchise installment, diba? or watch it one after the other. Pero at least yes. my option, diba? and then. Third option that got all the producers parang wide-eyed na hindi eh, pa nila na-view yun, ha? Uh, ang ayaw ko mangyari na when they do the 3 hours 28 minutes, at the back of their mind, they're saying, anong gagawin namin ito sa movie na to? Mm-hmm. Ganito kahaba to. Mm-hmm. 
Now, the third option was maybe we could sell it as a series. Mm. And that's when their eyes lit up and said, yeah, I think that's possible. So now when they sat down and, and watched the film in its entirety, they're willing to invest on a three-hour, 28-minute film because they know it can be turned into a series. No? <laughs> and it worked. It worked. Yes. Immediately after that, we, we sent it to uh, HBO. And then the full film, we also worked on it. We sent it to the festivals. Um, and, and immediately, uh, Venice responded. But it was... Yes. We sent it right before they were accepting any entries. So, parang, they, sabi nila, you're too early, but we already <laughs> want the film. So, I'm sorry, but you will have to shut your mouth uh, uh, from January up to the time in July where we announce it. So, ha, but wow, that's a seven-month wait. Hindi mo masabi sabi na nasa Venice Film Festival. <laughs> but yun, uh, eventually, both the Venice and the HBO uh, deal uh, went through, and it's good for the it's good for the film. Kasi four years namin din nabaho yan, and kinamaan pa kami ng pandemic, di ba sa laki yes. ng budget. Parang is there a future for this film, pa ba? Diba? And eventually, right. it worked out. Right. Um, right. Pero the, ilang buwan din yun na uncertainty. Yes, sir. Yes. Oh. Yan. Direct, direct, I wonder also, kasi nga, parang nabanggit ko nga up top, no? Parang, uh, when the first OTJ film came out, that was 2013, it was a very, medyo different, different uh, cultural, political climate. Uh, this yeah. one, st you started working on it 2017. Ngayon, finally 2021. It's it's about to pre it's premiering in a few days, no? Um, paano paano na influence yung yung ng ng current political climate in the Philippines? Um, ng current admin, right? Ng current issues emerging or that have emerged in the past six years. Like, how did they influence also yung direction ng ano OTJ the missing eight? Uh, it's it's heavily influenced by that uh, mainly because. When we pick journal, the reason why we pick journalism amidst medical and gambling is because of uh, Cambridge Analytica. Um, mm. There was a news article that mentioned that they tested Cambridge Analytica before it went to Trump in the Philippines. Yes. So, parang parang yun na yun na yung uh, namin na I think we're on the right track because then the fake news was happening already. Diba? And then, ang gulo-gulo ng, ng media and journalist uh, climate natin sa Pilipinas. Diba? And prior to that, of course, uh, we, we used uh, the Ampatuan massacre uh, as, um, as the inciting incident for, for this story yeah. to, to, to start no? um, in, in the film. And uh, yes, a, a lot of it is being dictated. Kasi hindi naman ganito kagulo dati yung, yung kwa natin eh. Yung use ng social media, yung trolling, yung lahat yan. Hindi naman nangyayari prior to this uh, to this um, government. So hmm. I think most of the topics really came from from the tenure of uh, Duterte. No? Yeah. Last few questions, sir, kasi uh, sinisita na ako nung, oh. ano, nung, nung comms people, yung comms people nyo. Um, yung timing ng paglabas nito, uh, I just want to point out na, di ba, parang it's patapos na yung Ghost Month in the Philippines, a.k.a. magkaka-political announcements na in the coming days and weeks in the Philippines for 2022. Um, sadya ba yun, yung, yung lalabas itong ngayong mag announce na rin, magkakaroon ng maraming movements in politics. Kasi it mirrors what, what's happening in, in, in the movie, right? Or was it, or how did you react when you realized na parang, hmm, sakto? Hindi, oh, ganun nga eh. Uh, it took us four years to, to do this film. And each time, every several months, we'd say, ay, maluluma na itong movie kasi ang dami nang nangyayari. <laughs> but each time then you realize 
it's supporting the film even more, no? All these news, the craziness, ang pagka-surreal ng mga news, ng news cycle natin sa Pilipinas, parang it supports it. And now, just when we all thought, okay, ay, buti na benta. Lalabas tayo sa Venice, na benta sa, sa HBO. Lalabas tayo sa HBO. And then, papasok na rin yung eleksyon. And the yeah. bigger story in On the Job, The Missing Eight, is also partly elections. Yeah. So yeah. nothing could happen in Philippine politics that this film will will negate, di ba? Kasi parang, yeah. uh, kahit gano'n pa ka-strange, parang timing pa rin siya, timely pa rin siya para, this, para sa movie na to. Saktong sakto nga yung timing direct. Um, yung gusto ko rin itanong, di ba? Parang, um, I didn't realize it when I was watching the first OTJ, but upon rewatching it with, with the, the re-edited version, of course, for the series, music plays a huge role, especially in the set pieces uh, of of OTJ right. and OTJ the Missing Eight. So, how did you go about selecting the songs or the music that you'd be using for, lalo na the very crucial scenes, like the set pieces, yeah. um, for a particular character? Well, um, if if you look at my filmography. I do all sorts of films. And yes. uh, I, I'm not the kind of guy who would say, I just want to do the same kind of films for my own set of audience. The reason for that is now I have a chance to make different kinds of films. Why not? Diba? And OTJ has always been assigned as this epic sprawling uh, material. In relation to my other works, no? Honor Thy Father, medyo intimate, small, di ba? Ito, talagang, in my mind, sprawling talaga siya. And I was only, in the first one, actually, I got a really good soundtrack, but all the other songs that were taken out then from there, because we couldn't afford it anymore, would have made it l- so much better pa, di ba? Yeah. But here, in the second one, because I was hinging it on the idea of politicians as gangsters, I was able to to dictate my soundtrack and my visual to be like an American Hollywood crime movie, gangster movie, where we use standards, we use Frank Sinatra, Tom Jones. Yeah. You know, you know? So uh, that's the idea. I, I feeling ko lalaki palalo yung kwento if you have that uh, kind of uh, swell in the music, in as much as in terms of visual also, there are a lot of languid one-shot takes uh, yes. where we traverse to a particular setting, which also pushes uh, the film to be a little more sprawling, epic, uh, di ba? Right. So parang kailangan sama-sama sila. And coupled with the graphics, that go into each segment every time there's there's the news report that comes in, the graphic yeah. also opens up the film to a bigger world, diba? that you can see what's happening outside of the circle of the characters. No? Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yun nga yung interesting, sir, no? Uh, direct, parang ano siya, parang slow burn in a way and i think the music does help a lot in, in making it feel like a slow burn um in fairness yeah. hindi ko naramdaman masyado yung sobra sa 3 hours na screening nung pinanood namin yung um one of the more final drafts na ata yun ng ng film no when you uh, watched it yes, last year yes. so yes. pero sir siguro to 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 wrap things up no like okay it's been 4 years in the making um, with a pandemic right smack in the middle of the process, uh, may, may uncertainty pa tayo for a while how it would be released, where it would be released. So, ngayon, it's about to premiere at Venice. It's about to premiere via uh-huh. HBO Go across Asia. What does OTJ, The Missing Eight, ultimately want to say? Uh, well, as uh, I, I'm not one to to hinge on one kind of message uh, for my films. I think uh, uh, even Michiko, when you ask Michiko Yamamoto, uh, what's the theme of your film? Uh, I still don't know because you, you're just letting the characters uh, come alive and they, they go through 
they go through the cycle of the story and then you realize their themes sort of start coming out when you're done. And of course, when you want something specific in a theme, then you can start uh, directing it towards that theme. No? Uh, but I think uh, one, for the audience, uh, this new this new release of on the job the series and it's just timely that it's not just released in the Philippines but in Asia in general uh, gives everyone a glimpse of what it's like to be in the Philippines uh, I think uh, and I'm not supposed to be the one to say this pero OTJ uh, is the Siguro pinaka representation ng Philippine uh, politics and society and how it works uh, when it comes to corruption, to crime. Uh, parang ang lawak ng dini discuss ng on the job. And if you want to to see how it works in the Philippines, then go watch on the job. No, uh, message wise, I I think uh, for for the Filipino filmmakers in general, the message then of on the job is even when you thought the pandemic is gonna kill everything that we've done because there's no cinemas to show it to, no one wants to buy it. Uh, here comes something like on the job that could still make it, no? Um, Imagine in more in the pandemic, it's so hard to rise above uh, and be recognized, diba? Kasi lahat ng tao lugmok globally, mm-hmm. di ba? And for the movie to to appear in Venice, di ba? Uh, amidst all the films that submitted, and then to also be afforded uh, a general release by HBO as a streamer, uh, parang win-win siya on both ends. Eh. There's the prestige, and then there's uh, getting everyone to see your work. A lot of times, it's really hard for us Filipinos to get our films be seen by the wider audience, by a global yeah. audience. But um, on the job, despite all that happened in the pandemic, still managed to do that for us. Diba? And that's right. what we're proud of. Napakaganda pa ng timing nitong pasimula ng... Um, ay ako tawing circus. Magsimula na ang totoong gulo ng Philippine politics leading yes. up to the 2022 elections. Maraming salamat, Direk Eric, for your time, um, for accommodating us even if you're in Italy right now. Um, OTJ, The Missing Eight, debuts at the Venice Film Festival on September 10 in Venice, their time. So that's around September 11 in the Philippines. And then on yeah. September 12, The Missing Eight will get it's Asia wide release as an HBO Asia original series via HBO Go. So that's how you watch it here in the Philippines. Uh, maraming salamat ulit, sir. Konting paalala kung nanonood ka September 30, ang deadline ng to register to vote for the first time, update your voting records, or reactivate your voting records. So if you haven't yet, and if the quarantine restrictions in your area allow for it, Make sure you registered to vote in 2022. That's super important if you watch OTJ, lalo yung madadamdam yung importance of registering to vote and making a good choice um, in the 2022 elections. This has been Beko Pin. Thank you guys for watching. Panoorin nyo yung OTJ, The Missing Eight, and OTJ, the series on HBO Go when it comes out. Bye, guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Thank you. Watch it, guys. Bye. Bye.